Let's talk about your relationship with Mario Cristobal. I guess he's a he's a relative in in, in some way, shape. He is uh, related to my uh, children's mother, wow. Myra Ruiz. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but that that didn't really play a role. I mean, at the end of the day, Mario is his own person. Uh, he's an amazing individual. Uh, he's got that firepower. I love him. Uh, forgetting about you know what relationship there is at the end of the day. You can't hire somebody because they got a relationship with you. got to hire the real deal. And the guy's the real deal. Um, and, and you've seen just, you know, players gravitating towards that. There's this, this excitement, right? This buzz of, I want to be there. I want to be at that game. Uh, I came up with a slogan maybe about a month ago. It's called, The Time Is Now. And ironically, without knowing, he said at the press conference, The Time Is Now. And the time is now. Were you involved? I, I assume you know the, the Moss brothers and, and, I some, know the Moss brothers, and yes. some of the people that were involved in bringing Mario here. Were, were you involved at all in any uh, of that? All I will say is that I know everybody. Right. So, but you were supportive, obviously, of, 100%. of Mario coming to be coach. So, is there a chance that you'll get involved in other areas of football, you know, maybe helping with some of the facilities on campus? Um, I can tell you that from top to bottom, we will be very involved with the University of Miami. Uh, to, to make it all as best as possible. You know, I think that something that a lot of people don't relate to real well is that when people like yourself, when you, you, you have success like, like, like you've had, you, you like to get involved in, in things that are like a passion. Yes. You know, for you, you can, you, know, you can only have so many homes and right. so many boats and, and things like that. And, and it, it kind of like rounds out your life a little bit to have outlets like this is, is, is Miami football evolving into that kind of outlet for you? so look I do a lot for a lot of different organizations <clears throat> I mean I just donated 10 million dollars to Westminster uh, uh, Academy um, so I think what people need to understand look I've worked very hard in my life uh, I started with you know getting a loan from my dad for 800 bucks with his credit card so I started from the bottom up what people need to understand is, number one, you got to work hard, but you got to have luck. And I consider myself a lucky person because I've been at the right place at the right time, but I've executed upon it, right? So I, nobody could say that I didn't work for it. I sleep three, three and a half hours a night. I'm a workhorse. Nobody can outwork me. Um, I'm a trial attorney. <clears throat> I've reached, you know, probably top level at, at my career. I try my own cases, very involved in everything that I do. But there's only three things you can do with money. You can either do bad things with it and think you're powerful and that you can run over people, or you could do nothing, or you could do what I consider to be positive. And what I consider to be positive is what I'm doing now. I'm donating to schools. I've always focused on the youth and the elderly. And to me, the youth is you know around that 22, 23 year old, year old person that still doesn't have enough experience but is still already an adult and you can provide them with some guidance or a good amount of guidance and then the elderly because there comes a point in time in life that because of your mental and physical abilities you can't do what you used to do before <clears throat> those are the two areas that i focused on and i've always been involved with the youth it's not just now i've always supported schools athletes um one of the things that you know i think is good that I pride myself at is I bring every summer 20 to 30 kids whether they're in high school college or law school or in any potential profession to learn in my office what it is to work in an environment and I counsel them we have big problems with uh, alcohol we have big problems with drugs and you know I've never done a drug in my life and I don't drink at all <clears throat> and I'm not criticizing anybody that does it but I think those are things that harm our society and if I can just do, you know, one thing for one person, that's a big, big chunk of, you know, relief for at least that one person. When we've developed the technologies that we have, our technologies will save millions of lives. That's not money. That's, you know, you take that with you, right? So when you reach a certain stage and you have a certain amount of money, it's not what, it, it's not what drives you. So everybody thinks about money and money and money, but money doesn't make you or, or change you. What you can do with the money is really what makes you happy, right? Now, you can make yourself happy or you can make others happy. And I've always been a person that 
you know, I want to be happy myself, but if I can make other people happy, to be honest with you, that makes me happier than making myself happy. And, and people's tendency is, people don't believe that. Like, you know, people are always skeptical. I think, you know, I think society as a whole is always skeptical of what people do and why they do it and the motivation. But, you know, once people know me and know who I am for real, they understand that because they've known me for a long time and they know that it's just the way that I am. Um, you know, I don't need to fake anything or, or say something because at the end of the day, like I said, I could just stay home and do nothing and, or I could do something. So when you do something like what I'm doing, you're exposing yourself as a target to get hit by whatever. But, you know, you got to understand that you can't let that dissuade you. I never get dissuaded by negative commentary because at the end of the day, when you act and you do the right thing, that always prevails. Uh, <clears throat> technology has obviously become a big part of your life. You talk um, talking about it, it's made you successful in business. And when we spoke at, um, I guess it was at Mario's press conference, you talked about how you want to take some of that wherewithal with technology and bring it to Miami football and, and, and find ways to help uh, the football team win through technology. Tell us a little bit about that. So we opened up an entity called The Time Is Now. I promise anybody who's involved with the University of Miami, there will be no better technology for NIL, for NFTs, for understanding the game, understanding the health of the athletes, following the health of the athletes, making them recover, making them perform better, uh, studying the game. There will be no university that will have better technology than what we will employ either indirectly through our own resources or in conjunction with the University of Miami as it pertains to anything that we do directly with them. Uh, it's not going to be any better than what we're going to be able to do. This is the real deal. Uh, we have the most sophisticated technology, in my opinion, when it comes to healthcare data and when it comes to many facets of blockchain technology, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, and we got some real firepower behind us. Uh, I'm, I have a, a deal with Palantir, which is a very strong and big company in the United States of America. We really are at the forefront of technology. Miami is the epicenter now of technology. Uh, because of what we've built, our company is, I believe, the second largest company in Florida and one of the top companies in the country. And what, in what we do, we're number one. Uh, and I never stop. I don't let grass grow under my feet. Things are going to be moving. We're already moving very quickly. Uh, we do things quickly. We do them professionally. We do them legally. We don't do anything that's, you know, going to be a, a, an issue for either the players or the university. We're an open book. We're transparent. But I do have the fortune of having three kids. They're all super involved. Uh, you know, they all have their own talent. Uh, and together between me and my three kids and obviously the, uh, the entire firepower that we have behind us, it's, it's a force to be reckoned with. So when you put all of this together, stadium, helping the university, all the other things you're doing, um, like what's your dream? What, where, where are you hoping that this all ends? So I've always been a visionary and because I kind of envision things in the future. So <clears throat> I envision already having a stadium, having all the crowd there, having an incredible football team with an amazing coach, everybody, you know, super pumped and getting that first kickoff, whether we're receiving or kicking off of that first game and knowing that at least I had a little part of, of to do that. That's the legacy that people leave. Uh, and that's what stays with you. Uh, you can make all the money in the world that you want, but if you don't do anything with it, I like to be challenged. I like to always be innovating and being able to create. Because <clears throat> that's where I stay busy. It's what drives me. That's why I sleep very little, because I always have the idea of what I can do, and I'm moving things along. But it's not just the University of Miami. You know, I'm bringing boat races back to the Miami Beach. They've been gone for a long time. I'm bringing power boat racing. We're doing that before uh, Formula One. Uh, which is uh, in May of uh, 2022, I'm bringing the boat races the week before. So 
I'm doing a lot of things that bring and stimulate the economy. Uh, just the other day, uh, I got the marching band uh, a gig so that the marching band can raise funds for themselves at the University of Maryland. So I'm trying to help every facet of the university, but I don't want people to think that it's just the university because I'm out here to help whoever I can uh, in whatever way that I can within reason. I was born and raised in this community. Uh, I have the ability to give back. Uh, more importantly, because, you know, it's great to go to a football game, but when you can save lives and I can, you know, tap into the youth and the elderly and keep people away from drugs and keep people away from, from drinking and driving and, and, and all those things that we all want, then that's really uh, fulfilling. And in teaching my kids that and seeing that they're operating under the same premise that I operate under, it's for me very fulfilling. How fast do you think you can make a, a football stadium for Miami happen? The actual build out is two years. Mm -hmm. um, the actual plans and everything involved to make it work, I would say is probably another 10 months to 12 months. So you're looking at about three years. But I think that before you get to the actual day that the stadium would be built, the excitement leading up to that and seeing the evolution of it is exciting as well. Uh, and I think that attracts a lot of people. I think people have been wanting this for a long time. I think we're kind of like just there or somewhat in the, in the spectrum of, ah, things are kind of dead. This has brought new life to everybody. Well, people are just getting to know you, listening to you. I think they're gonna be happy that you're, that you're on the case now. Yes. And uh, it could be some exciting times ahead for Miami football fans. So what I would say is if you look at my track record, when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I'm not one of those individuals that says something and then doesn't do it. When I say something, it's because I'm doing it. And that's, this is one of those. All righty, John. Well, we thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.